Hey y'all, Coach Nefi here, talking about the eighth day of the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, that is an extremely important day when it comes to the Feast of Tabernacles. In this video, what we're going to be talking about is some specific verses related to the eighth day celebration. We're going to be looking in the book of Nehemiah, Second Chronicles, and First Kings as we talk about some of the events that happened on the eighth day. But before we jump over there and look at those Old Testament verses, I wanted to show you this one particularly out of the New Testament of the Bible. And that's over in 1 John and chapter 7, verse 37. This is talking about when the Messiah actually attended the Feast of Tabernacles. You know, when you look back at the example that the Messiah left for us, he actually kept all of the feast days, including the post-exilic feast days like Hanukkah and Purim. So I'm not sure how they are forgetting about Matthew chapter five, when the Messiah said he didn't come to do, do away with the law. He came to fulfill the law, meaning he was giving us an example of what it means to actually walk in the law. But anyway, let's look at John chapter 7, verse 37. It says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Now, this is actually talking about the Feast of Tabernacles. You can see that if you go up further in the story, how the Messiah actually appeared to them in the middle of the uh, Feast of Tabernacles and started teaching those guys there. Um, well, here you have it at the end of the uh, Feast of Tabernacles, and he's going to give, you know, a few short words here. Let me, let me read what it says. It says, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So this is, you know, the part of the story where he's talking about this, this living water. And but you the point is, is that this actually took place during the eighth day of the Feast of Tabernacles. And you see right there, verse uh, 37, it says the last great day of the feasts. You read about this and all of the statutes over there in the book of Leviticus and chapter 23, right there in verse 39. At the end of verse 39, you see how it's talking about the eighth day and how it shall be a Sabbath day. It is a seven day feast. Um, the Feast of Tabernacles is just more importance. I shouldn't say more importance, but there's significant importance placed on the eighth day. So let's jump over here and let's look in the book of Nehemiah in chapter eight. This is um, verse 17 is one of the verses that talks about uh, the events that took place during the eighth day of the uh, Feast of Tabernacles. Now, just to give you a little background on what's going on here, um, it was during this time, if you read up in, in, in this earlier in this chapter and even in the previous chapter, you'll see that the people had found the law of the Lord. It's like the children of Israel, you know, they were in Jerusalem. I guess they were doing their own thing. And then, you know, somebody went and searched through the temple and found the law found that covenant that was given to Moses on Mount Horb. We can read about that covenant in Exodus chapter 20 through 24 verse 7. But if you remember the history of, of Israel, one of the things you hear about, you know, those guys and what they went through is how they would always have a period of blessing where things were going really, really well for them. And then things would turn south and they would get enslaved. They would get persecuted and bad things would happen. Well, what was actually going on there was their obedience to the covenant, their obedience to that contract that we have on us that, you know, is made between our spirit man and our heavenly father. Well, when things would be bad for them was when they was actually separated from the law, the kings and the priests, and nobody was actually paying attention to the statutes and commandments and stuff that they were supposed to be doing. And of course, you know, the way it works is when we step away from those commandments, it actually creates sin in our life. Remember the definition given to us in the New Testament is that sin is actually the transgression of the law. So when we start breaking those commandments and those statutes, we enter a, enter a sin 
sin state. And when we're in sin, what that does is kind of blocks out our conscience and makes it to where we can't hear our conscience. Well, what we learn here now is that our that voice that we're hearing from our conscience is actually the voice of our father. It is him who is talking to us by way of our conscience. That's like the communication point between he and us. That's how, of course, we use our, our thoughts or whatever to pray. But when he wants to talk back to us, he uses our conscience. Well, when we commit sin, we quiet down or shut down that conscience as if we're throwing a wet blanket on it, kind of smother it out. And so that's what was happening to those guys when they would lose focus on the commandments. They would actually lose the voice of God. They would lose their guidance. And then, of course, Satan would be allowed to have his way with them. And he would drive them into persecutions and drive them into slavery, drive them into slaughterings and all kinds of bad stuff would happen to those people. So here we are up in Nehemiah. Now, of course, Nehemiah, along with Ezra, were two of the key players when it comes to uh, building the second temple, that temple that was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. You read over there in uh, like Second Kings, chapter 25, how he went in and pillaged and, you know, took all of the gold and silver out and, of Jerusalem and, you know, took it into Babylon or whatever. But here, this is the time after King Cyrus and Artaxerxes and King Darius, who all made decrees in order to rebuild the temple. Well, here you have during a time when they actually started constructing that second temple and they have found the law and are starting to dedicate that second temple. And they're doing so by way of, you know, some of the things that they've read about in the law. Now, this is all important for us. This is actually extremely important stuff. When you think that the same thing is actually going on by way of the third temple, this third temple that is supposed to be built on the hearts of humanity is now in a construction state It's being built now. And a lot of what you see and all seeing going on in the world, you know, with people reporting um, um, uh, great awakening type stuff. You know, there's a lot of people who are talking about intuition, all of these dreams that people are having. That's another way that our father speaks to us. He speaks to us through intuition, through dreams and through the conscious. Well, you see all that. You see a great increase in this stuff, you know, taking place now, even before, you know, all of humanity goes through this great awakening. It is because people are finding the law. They're becoming obedient to those commandments, those statutes and those judgments that you read about over there in um, Exodus chapter 20 through 24, verse 7. This video is brought to you by the Celestial Clock Calendar, the official timepiece of the 144,000. Get your Celestial Clock Calendar at coachingafight.shop or follow the links in the description below. You can see what's going on in a number of places, like when you read about over there in um, uh, uh, the book of Enoch, chapter one talks about this. Uh, Daniel chapter 12 talks about this, e these events. Um, I think it's Jubilees chapter 26 that talks about these, you know, these end times when people will once again come in contact with the law and start keeping the law. But for the people who are now embracing the law and making it a part of their life, you start to see a lot what what is what is one of the definitions of the word rapture it says a mystical experience in which the spirit is exalted to a knowledge of divine things well you know that's a lot what's taking place and you see that over there in the book of um, Nehemiah and chapter 8 let's jump back over there and look at that right quick All of the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made booths and sat under the booths. For since the days of Jeshua, the son of Nun, unto that day had not the children of Israel done so. And there was very great gladness. See, like I said, these people are, are, are just now starting to keep the law again. And that's where we're at now. Um, you know, we've been in the church age, you know, the church age started back there in the year 312 with uh, the Emperor Constantine. 
So many of our father's people, at least those whose names is written in the book of life, are now finding these laws and are now embracing these laws and are now using these laws to, you know, uh, create what we know as the third temple, this third temple being dedicated on our hearts and our conscience. Um, of course, it, it has to go through these feast days. You look over there in Isaiah chapter 58, verse 12 says, and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairers of the breach, the restorers of the paths to dwell in. This is, you know, one of the main things that we do on our channel. Um, we are the repairers of the breach. This breach is formed when we lost these feast days and don't know about keeping these feast days this like we talked about earlier is creating sin and it is creating separation between us and the father praise him and his infinite wisdom that he gave us 10 years to correct this stuff and that's the period that we end now it says um, that we will be called or our children will be called the restorers of the paths to dwell in. And these, these, uh, these paths to dwell in, they go through Leviticus 23. There's no way we're going to get back in touch with our father unless we start to keep these feast days. Even those people who teach the doctrine of liberty and, you know, they talk about how they're going to return uh, um, to earth one day. Well, um, what they're talking about is actually reincarnation. They're actually going to be born again as the children of those who survive the tribulation. And when they get back, guess what? They're going to keep the feast days. It is absolutely necessary. They may be in the doctrine of liberty now, you know, just, you know, counting on the day that they, you know, are removed from the planet or whatever. But, you know, even when they get back, these feast days are going to be waiting for them. Well, let's look at verse 18. It says also day by day from the first day unto the last day, he read in the book of the law and they kept the feast seven days. And on the eighth day was a solemn assembly according to the manner. Now, this is important to understand during the Feast of Tabernacles, like we have established already, this is a temple building feast. It is all about our temple. When it when it's talking about tabernacles, the word tabernacle means tent. And just like the father had Moses to build him a tent that he could keep the mercy seat and the Holy of Holies in, um, well, uh, the tent of today for this third temple is actually going to be our flesh. Our flesh is the tabernacle. Well, as we are dedicating this tent, constructing this tent and building this tabernacle, building the third temple of the Lord, um, you see, one of the things that they did was they read out of the book of the law every day. For seven days, they read out of the book of the law. And that's one of the things that we should be doing now is actually reading Exodus chapter 20 through 24, verse 7. But anyway, I know I get a little bit preachy when it comes to the law, guys. Uh, I hope you're just feeling how important it is, you know. But let's let's go back in time a little bit and go back to the book of First Kings and chapter eight. We was just in Nehemiah talking about the second temple. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the dedication of the first temple. Now, when you Looking at First Kings in chapter eight, you'll find it to be really, really interesting um, because of this prayer that Solomon gave at the dedication of the temple. Um, I've covered this in a in a class. I probably reference it somewhere down in the in the comment section or maybe at the end of this video. But you guys check out that class. It, it, I, the title has something to do with praying towards the east or praying towards Jerusalem or something like that, because what we find in that chapter in that prayer is that um, Solomon was his his whole thing was that if we pray towards the temple, that our prayers would be answered. And you see it in Second Chronicles chapter six as well. But I pull out this one in chapter eight because it kind of ends over here. And um, verse 66, which is talking about the eighth day celebration. Let me read right there. It says um, 
On the eighth day, he sent the people away and they blessed the king and went unto their tents joyful and glad of heart for all of the goodness that the Lord had done for David, his servant and for Israel, his people. So here you have, you know, them celebrating the eighth day. Eighth day celebration is when he's actually sending these people away, merry and heart. This is the end of the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, like we said, there will be a prophetic fulfillment to this day. It would involve years instead of days. You know, all of this tribulation and apocalypse and all of that stuff will be in the past. We'll actually, you know, be in a time when, you know, the trees will start growing back and, you know, people will start, you know, rebuilding and all of that kind of stuff that that's, that's number of years down the road, of course, but that whole year will actually be or involve this celebration type event. I hope you guys understand that the significance of these eighth day celebration. Now we can read the same story over in Second Chronicles uh, chapter seven and uh, verses eight and ten. Let me read verse eight. It says, also at the same time, Solomon kept the feast seven days and all of Israel with him, a very great congregation from the entering of Hamath until the river Egypt. These people have built tents everywhere. They got them in the street. They got them on their houses, you know, and, and this stuff is going on around the world now. It's just not so many of the father's people compared to the 7.5 billion people that there are on the planet. So it doesn't seem like, you know, a lot going on, but you know, these there's a, it's a lot of people people sleeping in cars um people sleeping on trampolines uh people have built you know tabernacles inside of their houses um this is it's a lot going on um even if you don't see it um verse 9 says and in the eighth day they made a solemn assembly for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days and the feast seven days. So, and you know, we read about that over there. Solomon had, he had a 14 day jism bob going over there. I'm not sure I need to do some studying on that. He actually set a brother for, uh, 14 days. Now, was it, um, uh, was the additional seven days before the Feast of Tabernacles or after the Feast of Tabernacles? I'd have to look that up. If you know, you know, put it down in the comment section. Help me out. You know, um, I learned from you guys, you know, just like you guys learned from me or whatever. Um, this is a collaborative effort and it, and it needs to be because our father gives, you know, everybody bits and pieces of this puzzle. So you guys, you know, if you, if you know about that, um, 14 days that Solomon celebrated, put it down there in the comment section. Um, but notice that this is dedication. I, I bring you back to this guys. Again, it's talking about dedication of the temple, dedication of the first. This is the first temple. So you have dedication of the first temple. And then over there with Nehemiah, we saw dedication of the second temple. And then we understand now we are in the period where we are dedicating the third temple. Guys, this, 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 this stuff is cyclical like we talked about. Uh, let me read verse uh, 10. It says, and on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month, he sent the people away into their tents, glad and merry of heart and of the goodness that the Lord has showed unto David and to Solomon and to Israel, his people. So this is on the, the uh, 23rd day. This was actually be more like day nine or whatever. And we'll cover this in, a, in another class going forward. But, you know. Um, we're hoping you, you get in the, the picture about this eighth day celebration. One thing about, um, uh, second Chronicles in chapter, uh, seven, he talks about the tabernacling period and the eighth day celebration. And then it goes on to talk about how the Lord appeared. Our father, our heavenly father appeared to King Solomon again. And, you know, so this is some, some stuff to, 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 to read about too. You know, add this to you guys reading list, you know, after this video, go, go listen to it or read it. Um, uh, chapter, uh, seven of second Chronicles and chapter eight of first Kings, you know, it's a lot of important stuff going on in these chapters, guys, you know, with these prayers and these visitations, um, and such. So, you know, add those to your reading list. But of course, remember that Exodus chapter 20 through 24 verse seven is on your reading list as well.
I know we covered a lot in this video, but, you know, praise the Lord. Our father is increasing the knowledge, you know, on, you know, he's given us a lot of stuff to talk about, you know, and, you know, I, I know I'm not special at all. I know he's not giving me, you know, this knowledge just for me to sit around and, you know, act like I'm smart or whatever. If he's giving it to me, you know, same way if he used to give me wealth or whatever, it would be to share with others. But I hope you guys are getting the importance of this tabernacling, this third temple, this law and all of this stuff and how it all relates to one another. Um, this is a, some very important times that we are in now. Remember, we are still in the 10 days of all. So you do have next year. You do have the feast of Passover. You know, it's not over. You really ain't missed nothing yet. You know, I can remind you guys of the parable of the laborers where those individuals who showed up with only an hour left of of uh, work to do still got the same pay as those individuals who have been working for 12 days or for 12 hours so you know as people who've been serving the Lord for 12 years or 24 years you know you guys who have been serving for 24 hours are going to get the same pay it's all about getting into the law it's all about doing what we you know are supposed to be doing down here um, and so, you know, don't think you're late or whatever. Like I said, we're in 10 days, 10 years of, of repentance. So we do have some time left. Um, well, I'm gonna go ahead and close it out here, guys. Um, if you got something out of this video, hit the like button. If you didn't go ahead and hit the dislike button, but leave us a comment either way and shalom.